I told my friends and you know family like for years and years they get why didn't you do something with that you know you got so many great voices to do something and then you know they show up and they they want to do a demo and they want to get into the business and, and a lot of them get in and, and they're always looking for new people that's one thing that um, is kind of a misconception because people think you know oh, it's hard to get into and you know they always use the same people and so on to a certain extent that's true and the only reason why that's true is because the bar is set pretty high. And what I always say to everybody is that what you've got to think about is that you've got to either meet or exceed it with your demo. So what I would say is before you go into cut your demo, go online and start listening to, like all you have to do is if you go to talent agencies, on most of those sites, you'll find um, voice reels for all the different actors and start listening to them. Voicebank.net. Yeah, you can listen to voicebank.net. Yeah, exactly. But you listen to them, right? And, and you can hear what everybody else is doing and it gives you an idea of where the bar is set because those are the people that are working. So what you want to listen to is like, what are they doing that I'm not doing right now? Or, you know, have I got those chops? Can I exceed that? And that's what you want to do because you, you need to jump out so that somebody goes, hey, we haven't got that. I want that. Let's, let's, let's hire that person. And a lot of times, um, a lot of people are hired just off of their reel from the net. Like, um, I get lots of commercials that way. They just go on and listen to my reel on, on the internet, and um, I just get a call from the production house, and it's like, I booked a gig. And they just listen and go, yeah, that's what we want. And for, you know, because these days, man, it's so much about time. They just want to just find their talent and go. Sorry, there was somebody over the back there right there that had a question. Yeah. I might have already answered this, but I was just wondering, do you know of any places like in Utah or Idaho or Wyoming that like uh, you should just go in and kind of check the voice acting place out and kind of get a feel for it? Or? I wish I did, and I don't. Um, the, the closest people I know to you guys would be probably the people at ADV in, um, in Houston and Texas. There's classes here. There's classes here for voiceover? Yeah. Scott Shurian does one. Scott Sherry? Shurian. Shuri. Shurian. 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 Yeah. Scott Shurian. BLScott.com. Can I give the mic to this guy? So I, I can't. I can leave it in He said it's at BLScott.com. It's at BLStop. Oh. No. <laughs> go back. Bring him the microphone. He needs it, friend. Get in there. No, go back. Yes, he's right there. Go ahead. Oh. It's www.voscott.com. Oh, VOScott.com. And he offers classes here in Salt Lake City. Okay, that's cool. Does it, is everybody kind of, is, is everybody here taking acting classes of some kind and, yeah, that's cool. Is anybody here that hasn't taken, are they interested in taking acting classes to get into the industry? Yeah. Because one of the other things that you can do, if you don't want to take, um, like, theater, like I was saying um, originally at the top of the class, the next form of acting that I would say, like, a great class to take is, like, improvisational classes. That'd be great. Because a lot of times with this material, you literally walk in and you have no time, a lot of times, to look at the script before you go in. Like when you're going out for commercials and everything. Um, you'll hand in the material and it's kind of like, you get to look at it for a couple of minutes and you're in the studio and you're, you're laying down your audition. It's that quick. So you want to be able to trust your instincts. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I can say to anybody in here is like, the best thing for any actor is do just that. Trust your instincts. Because it's from there that your, that your individuality sits, and that's where all the good stuff is. Because more often than not, actors walk in and they try to give what they think the producers want, rather than your take on it. And they'd much rather hear your take on it any day. But a lot of times, we just, we're not confident enough to do that, so, we, so, so we'll try to give them what we think that they want. But the honest truth is, a lot of times, they don't know what they're looking for. And so they're really hoping that you as the actor are gonna come in with some creative ideas and that you're gonna do your job as an actor and do just that, come in with ideas. So when they ask you, do you have any questions? You can try to look at them and say, no, actually I had some ideas and I thought I'd just throw something at you and see where we go from there. And they're like, awesome. That's what they want. Because if you ask them what they're looking for, if they, know, if they don't know, you really put them on the spot. And it's kind of a bad place to start an audition. So the best thing that you can do is just come in with your ideas. Because believe me, they're gonna appreciate it. Even if you're like way off left field, they'll, it's, it's still, you walked in with ideas and they'll direct you and pull you back over to where they need you to be. But sometimes you might throw something from left field at them and they sit there and go, you know what, never thought of it that way. What would it sound like? And you do it and they go, that's kind of cool. 
I tell you what, we're just gonna, let's lay that down and then we'll do like more of what the client's been asking for, but I like this direction that you go in. It's, it's an interesting direction. I'm gonna pitch it to them and see if they like it. So you never know, your idea could be sold. So always, always go in there and come from, trust your gut, go in there, trust your instincts and let that individuality, that, that because that's where, that's where all your creativity sits. That's where all the cool ideas are. That's where the cool ideas sit that separate you from the person that's sitting next to you. Because otherwise, if we all walked in, try to do what we want the producers, what we think they want from us, everything's gonna start sounding the same. You know, because I, if I said, yeah, I want sort of like a big, broad Texan, you know, and painted the picture of a big guy driving a big Cadillac, and like, oh, time, everybody come in and they'd all talk like this. I get that all day long. Right, you're gonna hear it. Because that's, people get laid, and go, ah, I'm just gonna do that. And they play the safety, right? But come on, if you got something that throws you, if you got an uncle or somebody that you know, hang on, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna do that because like, he's hilarious, and it doesn't sound anything like that, play that card. Because believe me, they're gonna be hearing the other stuff all day. So anything original is gonna be refreshing. Yes, sir. Um, how do you, do you think it would be to work voice acting around a regular full-time job? If you, if you have a home studio, that'll probably help you out a lot because um, you'd be able to, your agent would be able to send you stuff and you'd be able to like come home at, at night, lay it down, and then have it fired off to them so they could send it off the next day. So that would make your life a lot easier. Um, it's tough if you don't have the flexibility to go out for auditions during the day and you don't have a studio set up at home, um, then you're kind of in a real kind of catch-22 situation, and that is hard. Um, I juggled four jobs trying to get into the business. Cause I, and, I, and they all had to be kind of like disposable jobs, you know? So you, you're working for nothing because the disposable jobs do pay nothing. So I mean, like you're really scrimping for a living, but you're just kind of keeping your eye on the prize the whole time and hoping that it worked out. I gave myself five years. I said, if it didn't work out in five years, then I'll just call it quits and walk away. And like Bill Bixby at the end of the hall. <laughs> Piano music playing on the background. Do, 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 do. <laughs> walking by myself. I didn't make it, man. But luckily for me, uh, caught for me like four years in. Four, four years in, um, I got uh, G.I. Joe Extreme, and then right after that I got uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then I went, I'm gonna make the leap of faith. And so far it's worked out, and that was in 94, and I've been working full-time ever since, so I've been very fortunate.